Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the third episode of So Tell Me with Phil Bojwane, the show where questions about society and its utter stupidity are raised based on my mood for the day. My guest today is a very funny comedian, Maureen Langen, a regular at Caroline's Comedy Club in New York City, who's also made guest appearances on Byron Allen's Comics Unleashed and on Joy Bihar's old talk show. Joy Bihar has described Maureen and as, and I quote, Maureen is wry and wicked. Audiences love her and so do I. Now, veteran entertainer Jerry Stiller has described Maureen as, and I quote, Maureen is to comedy what James Brown was to soul. She is on mediums all across America. She has contributed to the talk show circuit, including HLN, CBS, Fox, and MSNBC. She hosts her own show on KGO radio called Hanging with Langen. She's also earned the title of Best Female Commentator for her work on Bloomberg Television and Radio. And the list goes on. Now, that's quite a list you got there, Maureen. Welcome to the show. How are you? Thank you for having me. I love the whole concept of your show, and it's nice to meet you. Likewise. The pleasure is all mine. I, I've i seen you on YouTube and, and those gigs and, that I've just mentioned and some interviews uh, uh, with your stand-up set and whatnot. And I, and I honestly think you're very, very funny. In fact, maybe even underrated. I put you in the same category of uh, dying breed of comedians who still tell it as it is. Very few comedians do that Thank today. You. They all. I don't want to dissect Thanks. and segregate male and female comics, but let's segregate since society does that anyway, uh, for the sake of argument. Now, today we have what? Amy Schumer, Tina Fey, Amy Poehler, Sarah Silverman, Whitney Cummings, Jenny Slate, to name a few. All very funny women who tell it as it is in different ways, you included. But. Why do you think the new comics today, both men and women comedians, feel the need to be so PC? What is your take on this? Oh, the, to, the need to be so PC. I don't think that a comic like Amy Schumer being PC at all. Not her. I mean the new ones. Uh, She's think... one of the few who's not PC, which I like. Um, not PC. I don't know if the comics are being PC as much as uh, college audiences, perhaps, or audiences in general, because they've been raise an environment where you're not allowed to poke fun at anybody based on ethnicity or gender or race. But then, so people get upset. Like I had a woman walk out of my show because I made fun of Kirstie Alley who yes. keeps getting endorsement deals at the time she gains weight. And then when she loses weight, <laughs> she loses the endorsement deal. And then she uh, bulks it up again so she can get another endorsement deal. Right? I, I remember making this up. No, it's and now right. I only put on 10 pounds. I stopped running marathons. And my family and friends were teasing me about how chubby I got. And I'm a medium-sized woman. So Absolutely. I was making fun of the fact that she can go from a size 250 to 200, and people call her skinny. I go from a size 8 to 10, and I'm a fat slob. This is America. And I had a fat woman walk out and says that I'm made fun of fat women people. Like, you can't win. I, I, well, that, that's it exactly... It is scary, though. It's, oh, it's, it's terrible. I mean, it's, it's really stupid as far as I'm concerned. But... Um, I find that actually, you know, this begs the question about the uh, the generation today. Then, because back in the day, dating back to what Don Rickles and George Carlin, they said they they told it as it was. I mean, and no one got offended. You dealt with it as an audience. You don't like it, leave. Uh, but today, you can't say this. You can't say that. And I honestly think that the stand-ups are okay. The audiences are not. But above all, who has messed up this whole thing are the fucking improvisers, the stand uh, the uh, people from Second City. And I actually went to Second City for a year. And it is gone to the dumper. It's dull and boring. The shows are contrived. Second City can go get fucked as far as I'm concerned. Um, do you think the improvisers are ruining uh, this? Do I think the improvisers are ruining this? Again, I don't think it's... I think there are... I haven't been to Second City in years. Well, good for you. But I just think there's... there. I mean, I'm wondering, do you find that in Australia and Melbourne? Because Melbourne, I have friends who live there. They tell me it's very progressive, very artistic. Do you find that it's as politically correct as it is here in the States? Do I find is it? Uh, I think that in Australia they become the same as America. The, the, the audiences worldwide have become the same. They all, it's like with me. Uh, more, I was actually a roast comedian. I am a roast comedian because I. Uh, what's that song? That's my dog. I'm sorry, that's my dog. this is live radio, baby. This is a live podcast. I can barely walk after my surgery and Don't my Don't worry, we're going awesome. to edit. We're so, gonna, you know, we might leave that in. Why but... edit that? That's really funny. For the love of God. Don't fucking edit that. Don't fucking 
edit it. What are you, politically correct? <laughs> no. Dogs can't bark at a goddamn podcast? I'm sick of your shit. No, what, are we going to talk contrived questions? My dog bark. Dog bark. Deal with it. I'm happy to have Brown the dog in. Knows no tech- Completely happy. Don't worry about that. Um... No, I was saying about Don Rickles and, and uh, what, what were we talking about? Uh, yeah, politically correct. Uh, look, they said it as it was, and uh, it's become the same worldwide. I was saying I was a roast comedian. I am a roast comedian, and my last gig was in Malaysia and Kuala Lumpur to uh, 300 oncologists, and uh, they specified for a roast comedian, and I gave them one, and then later I'm getting messages halfway through the show, the event organizers telling me you're being too uh, hostile and sarcastic and abusive. I said, well, that's what a fucking roast is. If you don't like this, you should have said, get Jimmy Fallon on the show because he'll play games with you. I don't do that. So uh, it's the same yeah, worldwide. Yeah, well, get who you want. Look, yeah, and I think, like, I've been to a number of the Friar shows because I was a member of the Friar Club for many years. And in the old, back in the day, in the olden days, when they did those Dean Martin roasts and mm. they would have all the old timers come up, they knew who they were lambasting. So if they were lambasting Don Rickles or they were lambasting Lucille Ball, it was their contemporaries on the stage making fun. So it was some inside stuff. So there was an underlying love there. Now today on the roast, it's who can say, and I don't use this word um, easily because I, I don't care for it, but it's who can say cunt first. That becomes like the edgiest of all the roasters. And so you, you, you think, if it has some meaning or it's important, say it. But it's like who can say it first and say it the most often. And it's not even, they're not even roasting people they know. Yeah. You know, so that that's my issue with the roast today. I think roast should be more inside. It I should agree. come from more of the people who know. See, that's my problem. But, I mean, at the Friars roast, you know, Gilbert Godfrey gets up there and says crazy, dirty jokes, and yeah. people go nuts because he he's goes, a staple of them. Mm. They love him, and I can see why. But the most part, I think, well, who's that person up there? Oh, who who needs to deal with that person? Okay, who's getting PR from that person? Uh, you wonder why they're up there for the most part. I completely agree. I, I, I remember uh, I was talking to Kreskin about the Dean Martin roasts, and those were classics, and I wish they had that back because uh, you're exactly right. The fries today, the, the roast today are just, they're just, uh, I, I, th- you can't even describe them anymore. I mean, recently they what? They roasted Justin Bieber, which I want to actually get to. This guy, uh, what's he being roasted for? He's not even a comedian. And uh, he's on, he's dominating the airwaves with his shit music. Um, w- where do you think this guy is going? I mean, 21 years old, uh, people love him, the kids love him, millennials love him. Uh, w- what's happening in society if someone like this is on the top of his game? Honestly, I don't follow bus- 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 Justin Bieber. I don't care about his music. He doesn't interest me. It might be good music. I don't know. Oh, Because I don't shit. care. Like, I look at him and I go, he looks like such a poser. Yes. Everybody has to do that kind of sideways peace sign thing. And I don't care. <laughs> I, like, it loses interest for me. At least he can hum a tune. The Kardashians are just humming. You know what I mean? I, I, at least he hums a tune. They're just hummers, I guess. I Absolutely. Um, With their inflated... No, he's a. Uh, uh, th- but this is what what I'm saying about society is that uh, people today they appre- they don't appreciate the good things anymore. Everything is down in the dumper. They they, they like rubbish. Uh, wh- why? Why is this happening today? Why isn't everything staying classy? Well, two things are happening. One, it's what they're being fed. Mm-hmm. It's what they're being fed. I have a television show I've been trying to pitch, and it's really good because I was a television broadcaster for years. Yes, it's funny. It's smart. It has heart. The, the audience is. We tested it on. Love it. They're like, well, what are we going to do about her age? Um, (laughs) Can we really like it? Uh, What should we tell the networks? What's your age range? So you see, good work is being negated for the quick spot, for the salacious. Who are the crazy characters in it? Where's It's fame for fame's sake. So they take the lowest common denominator, and it gets disproportionately rewarded. Poor Bruce Jenner was an Olympic hero. And then he spent the rest of his life keeping up with Kardashians. Not exceeding, not excelling, not surpassing, but keeping up with those fat ass tarts. You go Justin Bieber, he might have good music. I don't know, because I don't listen. I tune so you get people who might like some things, they shut off the television. They stop going to the comedy club. Mm. The comedy club stop putting on good comedy. So it's a cycle that fuels itself. So people who I know who love a good comedy show will no longer go to the clubs. So you have to get into theaters. And the only way to get into theaters is to fill the seats. And the only way to fill the seats is to have fame. So somebody like me, I would have to be a cougar to Justin Bieber. I would have to do something really salacious. I said to this young kid at the end of a comedy show one night, he came up to me and he said, you know, you're so seasoned. Can you give me any tips you know, towards success? Yeah. I said, absolutely. 
uh, we were outside. There were, you know, big billboards. This is in California. I said, yeah, here's my advice. Fuck a donkey. She goes, I'm sorry, what? I go, fuck a donkey. I'm not kidding. Get drunk one night, get a lot of tequila in you, find a donkey and fuck it. Get arrested. It'll be all over the papers. People will say, oh my God, he's a donkey fucker. Then all of a sudden you'll be headlining clubs all around the country and I'll open for you. There's my advice. Am I wrong? No, in fact, you're, 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 you're politically correct. So the donkey fucker, <laughs> I'm politically, the donkey fucker will get more stage time. I work Caroline, love Caroline. One night I had to go on after the naked cowboy. He walks around Times Square in his underwear playing the guitar. Mm. That's what he does. So I went on after, he doesn't have jokes. He doesn't have yeah. material. So that's what the problem is, is that people want to get, and I love Caroline's. I'm talking about the clubs in general. They need to make a living. They need to pay their bills. Yes. There's so much comedy on television. To get a thinking couple to go out, they'll go to a theater. They'll pay 35, 50 bucks for a ticket and enjoy a night of comedy. Mm. But you better give them some good comedy. And somebody like me, I'm out there 17, 18 years. I don't have the national acclaim no, of that, other names. That's that why, Maureen, that's why seat. I say that you're underrated. I, I've seen your comedy. I'm aware of it, and I love it. I think that, you, like I said, you're a dying breed, and uh, I really appreciate your humor, and that's exactly why I wanted you on the show. And um, I, I... You called me a dying breed. Does that have anything to do with my surgery of earlier this week? Well, you tell I, I me. Know. You're scaring me. You tell me because I don't. Know, I don't exactly know what happened uh, no. behind the scenes. But if something is up, I will send you condolence message. But uh... <laughs> I'm living a long stuff with me. So how do I say your last name? Bojwane. Bojwane. Yeah. Well, that's pretty good. That there you go. So, uh, uh, well, that's good. Good enough. How did you get to Melbourne? Like, who, what happened with your family? How, tell me that trajectory. The true story is that uh, I actually came over here to study when my uh, early, uh, late teens and uh, university. That's how I got to Melbourne. And I actually spent half my time in Singapore and uh, half my time in Australia because I'm actually a Singaporean citizen. But I prefer... And do you love Melbourne? Well, love is a strong word, but I do like it over here, yes. To some extent. No, I do like it. Not to an extent. I like it to some... Uh, I like it, period. I don't know. I love. I don't know what love is. That's sad. One day you will. Somebody will break your heart, and you'll, you'll learn what love That's is. That's exactly so why I don't know what mind. love is because it's happened too many fucking times. But yeah, um, go on. Sorry. <laughs> you too easily. You're a daffodil. <laughs> well, thank you. Whatever that means. Um, now I wanted to ask you something else. Speaking of uh, politically incorrect, um, do you enjoy going to the parks, taking a stroll, you know, a picnic or a run? What are you talking about? He's like a douche commercial. What are you talking about? I'd love to go to the parks and stroll and run. What, the, well, I'm gonna, what just happened? I'm just gonna I'm gonna get to what happened if you answer my question. I love to run and I, I do like the park. I don't have any picnics in the park. But I'm sure if they were they're selling a nice glass of wine and, and some foie gras, I might sit down on a blanket All for right, a bit. There's something I noticed that you have a dog because it was barking earlier. And uh, I, I love dogs as well. But there's something I want to ask you and something that troubles me. And this is uh, where we're going to get into the disgusting mind that I have. Um, you notice those people mm -hmm. who uh, tickle their dogs on their stomachs and near their genitals. Uh, don't, don't you uh, don't you find that uh, I, I want to coin this term called uh, <laughs> dog molestation. Doesn't it feel like that or look like that sometimes to you? Well, I don't know how far your friends and yourself go with your animals, but I keep my hand a healthy distance from my dog's vulva. Yeah. And uh, fortunately, the male dog doesn't have a ball sack, so I'm not in danger of touching that. And I stay away from his penis. It's not that difficult to do if if you want to. Why can't people just Phil? pat the dog's head? I mean, I... Are you one of the people who were sent to Australia who can't come back, like in, in, in modern times? You're like the brown Irish of today. Well, I'll take that as a compliment. You could get but, a book uh, and movie deal. You I, could get... We, we should do a buddy movie to, uh, to, uh, together. <laughs> Tina Fey and Amy Poehler did one. Jennifer Lawrence and Amy Schumer did one. Now Maureen and Phil can do one together, a buddy co cop comedy, a brown and white lady together. How's that sound? I like it. The Irish cop and the brown cop. I like it. You like it, right? There you go. Now, uh, speaking of, uh, we're talking about bitches and pricks just now. Speaking of that, Ronda Rousey, she suffered a first uh, defeat to Holly Holmes. Now, that was jolly news to me. Uh, Ronda Rousey, what's your take on this woman? I mean, you uh, do you like her? Or does she have just have something to prove? <laughs> I want to hear your take on Ronda Rousey because I, I, I know you have a take on this. Yeah, she's into, yeah, no, no, that's a crazy thing. I can't watch violence and I can't watch women 
destroying each other. I think it's so disturbing. I don't do violence. Like, I can't handle violence. And then I'm watching these chicks get in there with their mixed martial arts going nuts. I don't like that. that you lost me at Kung Fu. I don't like it. Good. You but, like her? Does that turn you no, on? No, I don't. That's, so, that's that, what I've learned about you. You like to touch your dog's genitals, and you like women who eat the crap out of each other. <laughs> would that be accurate? According to the mind of Maureen, it would be accurate. But for me, no, it's just part of the show. Um, I actually don't like Ronda Rousey, and I think women... Uh, look, uh, let, let's just move on from Ronda Rousey, because I could get into this. That's what I'm learning about you. You're disturbed. I'm very disturbed. Taking- I do this for a living. I've, I have to be disturbed. So from uh, from talking about cat fights, this is the whole point of the show. You ever see those people uh, who uh, cut their nails in public? Have you seen that before? Literally taking a nail clipper and cutting cutting the nails in public and uh, just all over the place. Doesn't that disgust you? Of course, it's disgusting. Now wait, that, it's disgusting. It is horrible. It, it is terrible. But you do it. No, <laughs> I don't do it, but. Maureen, I want to ask you something else, actually. Now, this is a true story. Your father was a, was a garbage man, or is, was. My father is a retired New York City education worker, yeah. Now, how did you get into comedy with your, uh, was uh, growing up in the house that you did, did you uh, develop a mindset that led you to do something like this for a living? Because people like us, it's always the environment yeah, that we're surrounded in. Uh, yeah. Do you think it's a funny question? And you don't want me to answer seriously or not? I want, yeah, seriously. I, seriously, well, I, I want the Maureen answer. First of all, my father did not cut his uh, toenails in public <laughs> or his fingernails in public. He did far more embarrassing things to us, but that's okay. Um, you know, I don't know. I think growing up in an alcoholic family, you have to find humor somewhere. That, that's, I think, wit and humor was already in us, but I think using it as a way to um, be in the moment. Mm. You know, in your own moment, that might be a little bit better than the moment that's around you. Um, but I like to think that even if my father weren't, I'd still be funny. I like to think you don't have to be treated a certain way to be funny. But I just think the truth always matters to me. Because I think when you grow up in a family where there's a lot of secrets and shame and lies, you're always like, well, that's not what was just said. Wait a minute. I just saw the truth. What are you talking about? Mm. So I think uh, my sense of humor comes from a need to tell the truth. Which, as you say, does become harder and less appreciated in the comedy world. That's exactly, you're exactly you're, you hit the nail on the head. Uh, good comedy is honest comedy and vice versa. And uh, uh, the kids today have lost that. I mean, uh, That's true. I, I which, now, what if- which is exactly why I keep re- reiterating the point that I really, really appreciate your comedy with all the banter that's going on. I, uh, I, I hope to see you back on, uh, on the, uh, on the stand-up circuit as ASAP. I mean, I know that you have a radio show, by the way, called, uh, what was it? KGO, right? Uh, in uh, San Francisco is this? Can she hear me? Maureen, can you hear me? On KTO, yes. yes. It airs Sunday night. Yep. I can hear you. Yeah. <laughs> yes, I do a talk show in San Francisco um, called Hanging with Langan. Yeah, and that's, uh, I've never, I, it's, I, it's I, three I, hour talk show. Uh-huh. Okay, go on. Our connection isn't great yeah, right now. Yeah, it's terrible. Go ahead. I, I know, uh. Can you get the connection started out a little bit? Or? Oh, I host a three-hour talk show yeah. on Cage Radio. Okay, Maureen, I, you're breaking up again. Uh... I get to talk. Yeah. How, how are we going to solve this? Maureen, your internet connection is very, uh, it's, uh, it's a bit off. I, didn't, I, I can't hear you anymore. All right, do you want me to go try another room? No, I mean whatever. I mean, as long as I can hear you, I'm sorry to trouble you. It's just that I we I can't hear. I I missed that whole bit about yeah. your your show. Uh, is there any way you can set up the microphone? Yeah, and it was it was probably the best. Part. I know it's probably the best part, and you got to say it again. Uh, how are we gonna start this? <laughs> Do you want me to? I can move. Can go you, closer would, to the Would you mind? Because I I really uh, the the connection's pretty bad. What's happening? Yeah, I don't mind. Let's get this party. Let's keep this party going. Well, no, we're going to keep it going. Take my water. Take your water. Take Hold your... On. Take... <laughs> the house is under construction, by the way, here. Why? Is, you, is your York, civil engineer the, husband uh, oh, causing some problems? I split my problems. time between California and New York. Your civil engineer husband doing some renovation for you? Uh, we're not together. Oh. Okay, I'm sorry. I did not know that. We're not married anymore. I'm sorry. I, I had no... Sorry, he likes golf better than me. What can you do? Now you know. The truth has come out. 
All right, let me see where I can sit and talk to you. Yeah, where, where, as long as I can hear you, because even see. your images are very, very blurry. They look like a, a porno flick that has no... Uh... That's good. Good for you. <laughs> your lucky day. I'll try. Can I sit in here and do my interview? You can sit wherever you want as long as I can oh, hear you. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna Anthony to pay for the background. He said I can uh, come into the basement and do my. I interview. can't see anything Thank anyway. You, so uh, it's what's it's 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 all blurry. So even now I'm right next to the whole computer. Is it still blurry for you? Yeah, it is blurry, but I can hear you better at least. Well, then let me plug this in. <clears throat> It's her side, is it? She. Why is it? I'm going to make that work. I'm going to unplug something. Yeah. What the fuck? All right. I want to see more to another satellite. <laughs> that one, that one is it. What, what did he say? <laughs> he said it's so blurry that you need What's to happening? launch another satellite into space just to uh, see you clearly. But uh, can, there's no way we. we okay. You guys are not. It doesn't matter. You don't do it anyway. As right. long as I'm having such a Bye. good time with you, as long as I can hear you, I'm I, that, that's more than enough. All right, I'm gonna close the door. Hold on, so we have privacy. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> if you, if he comes in, would you All right, Gojani, here we go. All right, Maureen, can we hear each other? Can <laughs> testing, testing, one, two, three. Yep. Okay, go on with your. I can go on with your. Uh, you have uh, let's... my riveting story. No, go on with the uh, the radio show that you have in San Francisco. I want to hear about that. I do a three-hour talk show on CNN. Mm. I should have you on. So I'm not CNN. It's on KGO. <laughs> I want it to be on CNN. See, see how I think. Larry, um, so. but I have to have you on sometime. You come on. I would and I'll have love better equipment. It'll be worked out better yes. than your on your end, for Christ's sake. Anyway, um, that's a joke. I know. Yeah, you come to the comedy scene in Melbourne, but we can't curse. We have to be more. Well, you know, you can't curse. It's an FCC rule in America. Like we can't say shit, fuck, tits. On, t- on TV, know, right? George yeah, Carlin well said more. You can't I mean, say uh... You're well aware of that. I wouldn't know that from talking to you today. You are well aware of that. I might surmise that you never heard. Hi. Do a three-hour talk show that is fun, smart, and has heart. I land-based some celebrities. I talk some hot topics. I interview some cool people. I had Anderson Cooper on last month. He wow. was cool. Wow. That's... I'm having a stripper on. This. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Speaking of yeah. uh, of uh, of celebrities then. Um, Stripping? What about, uh, what's your take on Kim and Kanye? Uh, they named their baby Saint and North. As far as I'm concerned, Saint better pray she doesn't go south as a career move at some point. What do I think about them naming their kids? It's, to me, it's not, I don't, they're, the first one's named after a compass. Yeah. That's the other what... one's Saint. I don't, it's more like they're naming books or, or compasses. It's ridiculous. That, that's it's, what... I get so angry. Do you know Kanye West? Kanye West, I'm not kidding. Do you remember he went on Jimmy Kimmel? Yes. He told Jimmy Kimmel, I swear to you, he's a genius sent to the earth. I know, and he's not, because uh, if, you name your saint, if you name your son Saint and North, you better hope that Saint pray that she doesn't go south as a career, down south rather, I mean, as a career move, because that's, that's what's going to happen. I get it, but why not? What make her so why not, actually? Yeah, you're right, with, with parents makes, like that. They're probably going to encourage that. Yes, exactly. You think, <laughs> when I talked about Kanye West saying he was a genius, Sent to the earth. earth. I heard you. Like with an F. That's what he said. A genius sent to the earth. Now you're either a genius or you're sent to the earth. Mm. Like you can't be a genius. <laughs> so I believe that you're in the earth, on the earth, part of the earth. And you know why you say that? Because I know that Mr. you're. Light. I know that you're a, you're an English major, so you're gonna be, get all Shakespearean on me right now and and uh, and make me look bad with your uh, quality of English. I know what you're doing. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to make you look bad. <laughs> That's what I'm doing. The connection isn't doing it. It's the all me. <laughs> the connection is absolute shit. But the guest is. Let me be honest. Do you think that Kim is going to train her, raise her daughter to go to Harvard? No, or, I think or she's going to gonna raise her daughter to go to community college, but uh, and that also will be a bit of a of a heck uh, a hike. Sorry. Let me ask you something else. I was thinking about this on the drive over today, just in the way to the studio. Uh, between John Stewart 
John Oliver, Bill Maher, and Stephen Colbert, if you lock them up in a room together for one hour and ask them to debate a question on a stringent political issue, who would rise the victor after one hour? Bill Maher. Oh my god, I fucking love this lady. I completely agree with you. Bill Maher would, would by, by the skin of his teeth, I think he'd take it. But why do you think that is? There's just, well, first of all, I think it's a team of writers, <laughs> frankly. I mean, they have a team of writers. He doesn't look that good without a team of writers, let's face it. No. I was almost going to say uh, it wouldn't matter which one because they all come out. They're all just, enough, and I like white men. I was married to one. I, I have three brothers. But it just, just really doesn't matter. Pick one middle-aged white guy and he's the winner. You, you see, the game never changes. Okay, so he hit first base first. Okay, there you go. Mark. I know Moore has an edge to him that the others don't. I think Oliver's brilliant. I, of course, John Stewart is. Um, and who was the, the fourth one you asked? Your, your good friend, Stephen Colbert. Oh, he just, I don't know who the real person is and who the character is. I, I don't know who he is. He, I agree he, with he you. Me but this is what you get thing. out of Second City. They make up... No, it's, make up. It's, it's, it's so fake. Yeah, I know. I'm, I'm with you. Bill Maher is my pick as well. Uh, and I think, uh, yeah, no, completely agree. I, I, and this is exactly why I think you understand what's going on. And uh, I would go with Bill Maher as well. Completely. Um, I'm so glad that you agreed with... Oh, I do. I think his show is great. I'd mm. like to see, of course, I want to see more female writers and more female hosts, not just for the sake of it, because there's a place for it. I mean, it's just the, the, the sea of middle-aged white guys doing this genre and very okay. little I have to, others. It's a little crazy. I have to tell you something now that it's you mentioned crazy. female hosts. Uh, I'm actually a, a transgender host. I don't know if that's true or not. <laughs> it's not true because I don't like Caitlyn Jenner, I think. Bruce or Caitlyn, what the fuck do you call the guy now? I mean, Alex, you have any thoughts on Caitlyn Jenner? Sure. We'll ask my sound engineer since he's so into all this shit. No, he's not. I'm just messing around. Uh, I appreciate Bill Maher's edge, mm. and I appreciate him pushing the line. I do, and I like that he can be politically incorrect. That was the name of his other show. I like all that. But I got to tell you, you know... There comes a time when, you know, if you don't like what somebody's saying, you turn the channel. I like him. I'm not a fan of Sarah Palin. But when he referred to her as, you know, a cunt, and when he called her child a retard who has Down syndrome, I didn't find it funny. You know, oh, you that's did a little it? baby. Like a baby, really? That baby. Like, what did that baby ever do to you? And she gave birth to a, to a baby with Down syndrome. And he's a beautiful little boy. So that turns me off. But I still think his mind, when used for good, not evil, is, is fantastic. 100% I 100% I, I agree with you you're absolutely right about that um, uh, Maureen one more thing you, you're into movies aren't you you love the, the cinema you talk about that on your show don't you I do because I don't watch violence that's why when you were like tell me about Rhonda I'm like oh the violence I don't, the minute something's violent I don't watch it uh -huh. I don't know we could delve back into my childhood All right, so but the thing is uh, so I have these movie reviewers on every week so I can know what I should or shouldn't see <laughs> All right, because if you say you don't watch, I don't want to go and find. If you don't watch violence, do you do you watch action movies then? Because there's something I have, something I want to point out no. about action. No, you don't. Okay, I'm gonna point it out anyway. Um, at every fucking action <laughs> movie, when there's an explosion, have you noticed this? The guy always says, "Everybody get under the table," like as if that's gonna solve the problem. It's gonna save your life by getting under the table. Am I getting a blowjob or someone's getting a blowjob or what's going on? Because not, it, some explosion is going to happen, but it's not the kind of explosion you're, we're talking about. If you get what I'm saying. Got you. you want, yeah, I got it. You want, a, you want the human explosion. Um, yes, down under. I, I understand that. Monica Lewinsky. Uh, so I think if somebody, if I were with you and I wanted to say, I, you came, I'm in New York, I'm in California. All of a sudden I see uh, there might be an earthquake coming and I want to save your life because I enjoy your company. Yes. I shouldn't say get under the table. I should say drop because I want to give you a blow job, and that's how I would save your life. Is that what you're saying? No, uh, that's what I'm saying to okay, you. But good. I'm saying no, that I, in I, general. I need to know how to help. <laughs> well, I think but... saying that in general. But I'm just saying, <laughs> if I were to save your life, that would be the way. Why not? Right? I mean, Perhaps. fine. We'll 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 take the the path Bill Clinton takes. Okay. Now, uh, you got any dates you want to plug uh, before we uh, before I close off the show because we're running out of time? I, uh, any uh, stand up gigs going on? Sets at uh, uh, any comedy clubs? Go to MaureenLangan.com. I'm going to be at the Punchline in San Francisco. I have some gigs back in New York. Yeah, I've got a lot going on, so i got updates. But go to my website, MaureenLangan.com. It's there, or Facebook, All right, or and Twitter. You can, we can check you out on Twitter and on Facebook as well. Now, Maureen, my show, before we close off, I, have, I always have one last question that I have to ask, okay? And uh, I want your take on this. Now, 
The last question I always ask on my show is: Historically, what were we as a society? Where, what are we now? And where do you see us going as a society in the future? Is Donald Trump going to take over the world, and are we and are we fucked? <laughs> well, if Donald Trump takes over the world, we may be fucked. Uh, my youngest sister just said, "Maureen, I know you perform a lot in Canada. Can you please tell me about the different cities?" <laughs> I am hoping because I think we're in chaos right now. I think we're headed for World War Three. I do think we need oh to name a band. We need some collective soul. We need pe- we got to go inward, man. This this like outsourcing, this fighting, this killing, this it's nuttiness. I hope people will go inward at some point, but uh, that's what I hope. Fair enough. A little bit more enlightenment. Maybe is it enlightenment? Yeah. I know it's all en- funny, but it's what I hope. Fair enough. Because this, Donald this Trump, a- can you see him at a summit with An- Angela Merkel? <laughs> You're a dog. <laughs> Shut up. You're disgusting. You're- we're just in the bathroom. You're gross. I mean, look at her. That's what he'll do. It's horrible. That's exactly you know how he sounds. I'm I mean, you, sh- you do a good Donald impersonation. But yeah, no, it's society's uh, something is up with it and it's not good. <clears throat> Excuse me. And uh, I don't like it. But look, uh, on that note, we conclude today's show. I'd like to thank you, Maureen, for coming on. <laughs> it was an absolute pleasure. Now, look, ladies and gentlemen, newer, younger comics, learn from a woman like this. Stop being morons who talk about nachos and dip for fucking humor. That's absolute nonsense. All right, peace out, society. Try to be that way at least. Cheers. Cheers.